All right. Uh, welcome to Block 929. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, sort out the the Wi-Fi program. Um, let's see. All right, I am. I was just trying to sort out the bundles because I don't want uh, to have problems uh, while we are busy with the, the live sessions. Welcome to Block 929. Let me just um, put the light here with uh, manufacturing. We need to be start being serious. Africa is a giant, a sleeping giant. But I am sure that uh, we have produced enough engineers out there and we can uh, really take advantage of that and start manufacturing in Africa. Okay, uh, Cheiko says, hi Ted, hi, how are you? Please tell me where are you watching me from? <laughs> yeah, I would like to know where you are at the moment. Uh, tell me, are you in Africa or are you overseas? Are you in Malawi? Wherever you are, please, I would like to know. Today, I want us to talk about reverse engineering. Uh, I know many people in Africa, they don't like the, the idea of doing reverse engineering. Okay, yes, currently in Mali. Oh, all the way to Mali. Ah, that's nice. Huh? Wow, that's welcome, 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 welcome. Pan African, uh, one world says, I'm from Miami, Florida. Miami, all the way from Miami. That's great, that's great. I don't know why this light is just uh, uh, switching off. Maybe, maybe the batteries are not good because I just want to have a, at least good quality um, lighting in here. I don't know why it's switching off. Maybe it's because of the battery, it's flat. All right, all the way from Miami. Ah, that's great. But don't forget to like. Uh, we just want this to um, be shared to many people so that we can have a conversation. I think we this. I think this is a topic that we should be um, uh, focusing on at the moment. We have created a lot of engineers here in Africa, and I know there's also a lot of engineers in America, African engineers, and uh, we need to start really. Um, using our skills that we have to kickstart the manufacturing industry in Africa. Yeah, so welcome, 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 welcome. Yeah, so we're just waiting to see if we're going to get more people coming in. That would be great. Um, uh, this light, there, I, I had put a light here, but it's just coming on and off, on, on and off. Yes, yeah, so we're waiting for more people to come in. I've managed to share the the links to a couple of uh, platforms and uh, just hope that people are going to uh, so that we can have a chat. Thanks for the like already. Yeah, but um, okay. Um, I know that um, at the moment, like in America, uh, most of the people are still at work, if I'm not mistaken. Most of the people are at work, so uh, they won't be able to join us right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, I hope that we're going to have a couple of participants. Yeah, as you can see, uh, me, I'm an advocate of uh, reverse engineering. <laughs> Look at me. I'm busy working with, well, I was working with my vehicle at the back here. And in front of me, I've got this, uh, it's a tractor. It's a the manual tractor that I bought from one of the scrapyards. 
I want to reverse engineer this. I want to learn and see uh, what goes on inside this tractor and then see if I can be able to start manufacturing my own tractors. Lots of solutions in Africa, and lots of the challenges we are facing in Africa, they require uh, engineers to solve those challenges. And I think we are not doing uh, enough at the moment. So we should really try our best to start uh, looking into this. My main idea is to, um, you know, inspire uh, young um, engineers so that they can also start, you know, like using their skills to, to solve challenges. There is plenty of opportunities when you, you start looking at uh, life from that perspective, you know. But if you always look at uh, life from the perspective of getting a job, it becomes very, very, very difficult because it's very difficult to get jobs nowadays. Yeah. So uh, young people who are engineers, uh, who, are, who are graduates, I think they shouldn't be thinking of... Uh, looking for a job at the moment here in Africa. Maybe when you are overseas, you can be going to look for a job. But in Africa, I uh, don't think we should be looking at uh, uh, looking for jobs. Yeah, so if you're just coming in, please um, don't forget to say hi. Don't forget to press the like button so that we can have this session shared to many people so that they can come. I see that uh, we have got somebody, we have got Pan-African 101 uh, from Florida, Miami. Uh, what's the time there in Miami? Miami? And then we also got uh, Shaky Corey Berry, who's in Mali. Uh, Mali is in Africa. So I don't know what time it is in Mali at the moment. Yeah, so if you can let us know what's the time that side. Yeah, so we can... Uh, um, just know what 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 time it is there, yeah. But here in Malawi, it's just around it's just about to nine now in the evening. So a lot of people are sleeping. And when I talk in this um, workshop, a lot of people are always thinking, "What's going on in there?" there there's somebody who's just talking. Is he just is he preaching to himself? <laughs> yeah. So. I want to be doing these sessions on Thursdays. Uh, the section, sessions on Thursdays, uh, this time, I think it will actually reach out a lot of people who are in Europe. And then uh, maybe as time goes by, when I've briefed the, the security around my area, I'm also going to be doing early in the mornings, uh, Malawi time. So I'll be doing two o'clock sessions so that I can also uh, target people who are in the US. I understand if I do it after mid midnight, most of the people in the US, they are now finished working and they're gone home. Right now, those who are in the UK are having dinner or they just finished having supper. So yeah, they can be sitting down, relaxing and watching what I'm doing. If you're just coming in, please don't forget to press the like button and also uh, tell us where are you? Um, in Mali now, it's 18.48. Oh, okay, it's just... Um, it's just past two to seven in the evening. So we are a bit ahead of you guys. Yeah, I think, yeah, West Africa should be behind us. So we are one hour, uh, two hours, two hours ahead of you guys. All right. If you're just coming in, please let us know where you, you are watching us from and what's the time that side. Because uh, here we are just about to get to nine o'clock nine o'clock yeah it's to nine now at the moment yes so today i just wanted us to talk about reverse engineering let's let's discuss about this because um uh i see when somebody you know has got a lot of ambitions like some of us have and he wants to build a vehicle like this one i'm having here a lot of people um, they get upset they say you know that's reverse engineering you should invent your own ideas and all those kind of things but you know uh, sometimes you have to um, learn from others. You know, we learn from other people and then we try to do it and you come up with something. And uh, even the car itself, in those days, it was, it was invented those, those many years ago. But today we're seeing people are coming with uh, various types of vehicles. But when we see an African guy is trying to build something like a car or something, but people, they, they get very upset with that. But I think... You know, um, we have to take baby steps 
um, we have to learn from others. I see in India, they're using, their agriculture system is using, you know, the primitive agriculture. You know, they're using the old methods that they used to do in, our ancestors used to do in the past. And it's working. And it's, it's actually affordable to do it during this time. Um, Moana Zion in North Dakota, USA. Wow, it's 1 p.m. at work. Oh, you're at work. So <laughs> you're just stealing a little bit of time watching me here. Yeah. Ah, that's great. In the future, I'll do some uh, lives around 12 midnight so that I can catch you guys when you have just uh, knocked, knocked off from work. Yeah, I know when you're at work, it's not easy. You know, it's not everybody is going to have free, free time now to be able to watch. But I see that there's people that are watching after um, when, when the live has been finished, then they get home and they're able to watch. Yeah, so I was just... Uh, South Africa, thank you very much, Siabonga. I really appreciate you being here. One of these days, I'm also going to do a live. I would like to have a live to have a chat with my fellow entrepreneurs from South Africa. Let's talk about the opportunities that are there in your country and see how we can uh, face the opportunities head on and uh, take advantage of them. Yeah, but yes. Um, you guys from South Africa, also this topic, I think you should be, we should, we should, you should participate. We should discuss about what do you think about reverse engineering? Because um, I know there's a lot of um, engineers, African engineers, lots of young um, Africans are graduating from university uh, with engineering degrees. You know, some of them, they are even getting higher, higher, much, much higher qualifications. But now, we are not manufacturing. We will find that most like in Malawi, most of the young engineers are working in NGOs, for NGOs, you know, building, you know, houses uh, that are being donated to people or, you know. But I, I think that we should be looking at the challenges that we're facing in uh, Africa and then start uh, manufacturing, um, you know, goods that we, instead of um, us ordering things from China, we should, some, there are some things that we can be making here in Africa. Uh, Jeremiah Blanta Malawi, great job, Ted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of people from Blanta whenever I'm live. I don't know what's happening with the long way. <laughs> Thank you. Well, welcome to Block 929. Please, please, please press the like button. I only see three likes. I need. To, I see nine people now. I need uh, three like uh, nine likes there. All right. Uh, yes, reverse engineering is is definitely necessary. Moana Zion says that. Yes, I think so too. You know, I was in, I went to uh, one of the hardwares in town. Uh, it's owned by a certain Indian, and I uh, wanted to buy some materials for you know uh, for for my products here. And when I went inside there, I see they're selling these. Um, grain milling machines, you know, these engine, these grain milling machines. And I asked them where they come from. There were a few that were made here in Malawi, which is very good. And, but most of them were made from, made in India and some of them were made in China. So I said to them, you know what? I think I can make these milling machines and I can make them look, be exactly with the same standard as the ones that are coming from China. So these Indian guys, they were very fascinated. They said, can you do it? I said, I can do it. They said, then do it because we don't have to buy from that side because the problem of finding US dollars to pay and then to have a ship to Malawi, um, it's, it's, a, it's a whole uh, problem for them that they go through. So they said, if you can do it, we will buy from you. So I said, okay, when I've get, gotten some money, I'm gonna come buy one of, the, one of those uh, milling machines. And uh, it's costing something like two, they said they can sell it to me at 260,000 kwacha. And then they said that uh, they also got all the other parts that are needed uh, for the machine. So that guy gave me a quotation yesterday. So I'm gonna buy that machine for 260 and then all the parts and I'll bring it here at home. And I need to reverse engineer this thing. I need to look at it and see what can I do? How can I? you know, be able to make this machine. Once it's done, we are going to just be making them here in Malawi and then yeah, we don't have to be ordering from outside somewhere else. So 
That's what we're going to do. Right now, here in front of me, this is a tractor. Um, I, bought it, I bought it from the scrap. One of these days, I'm going to dismantle this whole thing and see just to learn, you know, how does it work. I think that's what we should be doing here in Africa, you know, um, learn from other people and see how they do their things and how things are. You, all you just need to know is the concept. Why does it have these parts and what, what do these parts do? And, and once you understand that, it becomes easy. It's the same as the machine that I've been making, the, the cement block machine. All I did, all I did was understand what, 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 what happens when this machine, these machines are making the cement blocks. So I, I learned that in here there is a, what you call a vibration, compaction, and also, you know, it has to release the block. So all I have to do is now to think of how can I come up with my own version that will do the same kind of uh, work. I mean, I'm, I don't have a degree. I've never been to university, but I, you know, I can be thinking in that kind of sense. So I know that there are, there are some people who, are, who understand this machine much better than I do. There are things that are mistakes that I've made there that they will know um, how to fix them because they can do some calculations. So this is what we should be doing, folks, you know? Uh, Tivani Vunene said, good evening, entrepreneur. Good evening, good evening. Tivani, where are you now at the moment? Where are you? I would like to know where you are. Are you here in Malawi or you are overseas? Uh, Siabonga says, true, we are doing the same on artificial intelligence applications to solve African problems. Yes, yes, yes. I, I'm telling you, we, we need to, you know, the, I, I, I'm always, you know, most of the young um, graduates, when they're doing some innovation, I know that here in Malawi, there were some guys that did um, uh, innovation through Internet of Things. And this guy was making, uh, like, I think what they call home automation. You know, like, you, you are out of your house, you can be switching on your stove and just all those kind of things. But, but I, it's great ideas. But do we really need those solutions in Africa? I think he, they are supposed to start now doing that and you should be able to remotely start your irrigation system. You should be able to remotely, you know, uh, do other things in the in farming industry. So they should be coming with these ideas in the farming industry. You know? So these are the areas that we, our engineers should be focusing. Don't focus on home automation because how many uh, African people want to be monitoring their houses, starting the switching off their TV, switching on the radio while they are away from home. You know, we African people, we want to go to, a, to the village and do some farming there. So we need um, uh, farming implements. In Malawi, we're still using the hoe. Yeah, uh, J.R. Rui says, peace and blessing from Brooklyn. Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> hey, welcome, welcome to uh, Block 929. Uh, Akil Hashim says, peace and blessings. I'm in the U.S. now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Where in the U.S. are you? I would like to know which part of the U.S. you are. Uh, Timvani says, I'm at, I'm at South Africa, Limpopo. Oh, that's great, Limpopo. Yeah, in Limpopo, you know, there's a lot of um, opportunities in Limpopo. I see um, lots of uh, construction going on in Limpopo. So if one can start a business there, like making blocks or making cement block machines, I think it would do very well. I, 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 whenever I used to pass there, I used to see lots of lots of um, construction going on. It's like Limpopo, I can compare with Lilongwe. <coughs> Lilongwe is also a construction site. All right. Yeah, so, yeah, but let's start thinking. How can we be doing our own manufacturing in Africa? Yeah. How can we inspire our young engineers to start thinking outside the box, you know? They shouldn't just look at um, uh, a, a, a manual tractor in the, in the shops, in the hardware, and just see something that is um, out of their reach, made in China. They should be thinking, I think I can be able to do that. You know, what should I do for me to be able to do this, you know? So that is why for me, uh, I'm going to now start sharing whenever I'm making a new machine, I'm going to be sharing uh, videos to show people the stages that I'm doing to inspire the young people so that they can also say, ah, if Teddy can do it, 
I can also do it. Yeah. Uh, Terman says, hi, Blog929. I'm in Washington, D.C. Oh, Washington, D.C. So we are having a lot of people from the U.S. watching us now. Uh, so are you not working uh, at this time? Akil says, I'm in Massachusetts. Hey, we are having, everybody is from the States. We have a few. Well, we've got one from Mali. we got a few in Malawi. And we've got one from South Africa. But the rest are from the U.S. Do we have anybody from the U.K. inside uh, watching us today? But guys, I see there are 15 of you. Please press the like button. Do me a favor, press the like button. And if it's your first time also, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Yeah, um, the target is for us to be able to do, uh, to get 10, uh, I mean, 30 subscribers every day. If I do 30 subscribers, that means we'll reach um, 1,000 subscribers uh, every month. So that would be great. Okay, hello, block. Reverse engineering is the solution. Yeah, that's the spirit. <laughs> that's the spirit. I'm going to show you uh, in this month, I want, I'm making a machine uh, for making uh, for, for solar. Today, what I did, I, yes, I think two days ago, I bought the sieve for solar. I think I should show you. I want to make um, solar thresher. You know, in Malawi at the moment, uh, the agriculture system, the agriculture industry is going to uh, is is going to turn, take a new direction. Our um, main cash crop in Malawi is tobacco, but tobacco hasn't been doing very well. So every year, our farmers, when they grow their tobacco, take it to the market, they're not getting their man, money's worth when it comes to um, the sales of tobacco. So I've seen most of the farmers have given up. They are now farming soya. So it seems like this year there's going to be bumper harvest when it comes to soya. Now, I've been hearing a lot of people saying that they've grown a lot of soya. They're looking for a soya thresher because then when you harvest the soya um, to separate the, the, the soya from the pod, people have to take sticks and hit the soya. So they've been asking me, Ted, can't you um, uh, make a machine that uh, will do the threshing? So I've been doing my homework online. So this month, I must be producing that machine. I've bought already the mesh. Uh, I've bought uh, some. Today, I went to buy some solar seeds and to just to check if they can go through the mesh that I bought. And they are going through the mesh, so it is going to work. Uh, Tim Van says, we can do reverse engineering, but the problem is funding when it comes to mass production. Uh, wh why are they not farming wheat for bread? I would love to visit Africa, but I have COPD. It would be hard for me to breathe. Plus, I don't think they would allow me to bring my. Sorry, you know, yeah, most of the countries in Africa have much bureaucracy. They might maybe uh, give you a problem. A great model for tobacco is North Carolina. Many Black Americans came uh, tobacco growing families. Musina um, said, I, I. Moana Zion said, I do a lot of design analysis at home on my spare time using and uh, saving my design small scale manufacturing shop in DRC, Rwanda, Burundi, or Tanzania. Oh, that's great. That's very, very good news. Yeah, but really, uh, reverse engineering, I think, is the only, um, that's where we should be starting. Because for me, I have been, I've been following. The farmers in Thailand and the farmers in India, uh, more especially in Asian countries, uh, I, I see that the methods that they're using there in their farming industry, they're using, um, most of them are reverse engineering products. You know, they make their own tractors, they make their own trucks for picking, for harvesting, they're making, you know, when they're working the rice fields, the people build their own uh, vehicles, you know, to, to, for, for planting the seeds and all those kind of things. But why are we not doing this in Africa? You know, one day I would like to travel to go to Asia and in, uh, in Thailand or uh, Cambodia there so that I can go and learn what these guys do. You know, I'm always fascinated. Why are they not farming uh, wheat for bread? I don't know. I don't know why we are not farming wheat. Um, 
that that is some some other question that we need to answer. So I don't hear wheat being grown in Malawi. I mean, wheat it must come all the way from Ukraine and Russia. Imagine and come all the way to Africa. I don't know what's going on with us here in Africa. We need to start thinking outside the box. You know. Uh, I do a lot of design. Okay, a great model for Tobago is North Carolina. All right. Uh, yes. So re reverse engineering is actually the the answer. Uh, like for me, um, let me show you the mesh that I bought. Uh, let me just show you show it to you. So this is the mesh that I bought from the hardware. Uh, uh, it says connection is unstable. I don't know if you can be able to see me. Um, yeah, I bought this mesh from the hardware um, because this hardware that I bought from, uh, they supply a lot of agriculture products. So I. I mean, I was looking for it, and then I bought it. So today I went to buy some solar seeds, and then I was throwing them on this mesh to see if they are going to go through, pass through, and they are passing through without any problem. There are so many other things that I've been buying. Um, so let me just put this back. Uh, Yeah, so I, I also I also go to I go, also go to scrapyards. You can see I bought this scrap from the scrapyard. I bought almost three of these that I'm gonna use to go into the solar machine. So this is what I do. Um, I do my research on the on, on, on the net, and then I I look at say okay how can I be able to build these uh, machines for myself? Then I go to the scrapyard. So I go and buy you know things like this. This was a knife for cutting tobacco. So I'm going to re-engineer this thing and then put a, a bush here and I'm put, going to put it inside the machine. And I'm also designing, I'm busy drawing up some designs for the, the silage maker so that because there's somebody who has asked me to make a silage maker for yeah, if I can do it I know there are many young people out there who can do it. And yeah, somebody mentioned about the capital. You know, don't wait for capital. Like for me, I'm not waiting for capital because the parts for cheap and then you make your machine and then you sell it. Once you sell it, you take the money, you go back, do it again. Like for me, if I, if I sell this solar, solar machine, I'm going to go again to buy more stuff. And then now, before I sell the machine, I'm going to do a video to show people how it's working. And then automatically, there will, people, there will be people starting to give me uh, orders. And then I ask them for deposit. You see, that's how you do it. So funding, don't worry about funding. The, your customers are going to fund you. You start little by little by little by little. And then as you are growing, it, funding becomes easy to get because you have to start yourself. Don't um, come up with your idea and wait for the day that you're going to have money. It's not going to work. If you're working, save the money and go to the scrapyard, buy something like this. Yeah, There are so many things. I was at the scrapyard yesterday. I even bought some... Uh, let me show you something else I bought from the scrapyard. You see, I, I went to the scrapyard and I bought this um, pipe. It's got a bearing here and also a bearing here. These pipes are put on a conveyor. You know, when they're when they roaring, 
you know, moving tobacco, they put it this on, on these pipes and they roll the tobacco and this thing turn around. So I found them at the scapia. Now I'm gonna do, this one is, is one that I'm gonna use to bend the flat sheets. You know, the metal sheet, I'm gonna make a, a, metal, a, um, a metal bender. Because for me to buy a metal bender is, is very, very expensive and we can't find it here in Malawi also. So I'm going to design myself because um, you need to bend the pipe when you are when you are making the these agriculture machines because no most of them have got an oval shape. So I I'm going to make a metal bender, but the materials for my metal bender are coming from a scrapyard. You can see it's got full of rust. I'm going to grind it and fix it very nicely, and then paint it with red oxide, and then yeah, it will be, put it in here so I'll be bending the sheets to use it in the, my, my, in my machine. So we shouldn't always worry about funding. Like for me, when, when people were asking me to make this machine, I was just thinking of where would I get the money? So what I'm doing, I'm buying little by little. And I know that the cheapest way to buy them is from the scrapyard. But later on, I will have enough money. I won't be buying from scrapyard anymore. So I'll be buying you know, straight from the hardware, a full sheet, um, and, and, and be able to do make my products. So yeah, reverse engineering is, 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 is the answer, but also um, don't worry about the capital, just save a little bit of money, make your first prototype. And once you make a prototype, do a video of it functioning and then share it on Facebook. You will see people start coming in. And when they come, you tell them they must give you a deposit. I'm sure people are gonna pay you because for me, um, most of the people, they, they give me deposits. Right now, I did an advert on Facebook uh, sharing the idea that I'm going to be making these machines. And uh, nobody has paid a deposit yet. And I'm not, I know that more, many people are thinking, I don't think Ted can pull this one. But once I make the first machine, I do a test, show it on Facebook. The, the orders are just going to come like, oh, I'm telling you, it's going to come because the demand for these machines in Malawi right now is very, very, very high. And I'm sure in any other African country that is farming beans, soya, uh, rice, because uh, the machine I'm making can also do rice, groundnuts. In Gambia, they're growing a lot of groundnuts, so they can need these kind of machines. So there is opportunities out there. So yeah, we should start doing reverse engineering. The, the only thing is when I make my machine, the presentation of the machine has to be very good. You know, you take one from China, put it there, and you put yours there. Nobody must be able to tell the difference. So that's how that's how we should be doing it. Uh, we should we should use local crops to suit our local needs. For instance, cassava and sweet potatoes are good for bread and very nutritional. Yes, that's very true. Um, yeah, in Malawi, a lot of people eat uh, cassava a lot. Um, most of the people are using cassava for breakfast. They can even make it also um, meal from cassava. So they cook food, uh, uh, meal from it. So yeah, uh, Ibrahim Ahmed, okay, you didn't comment yet. Kennedy, knowledge is power. I checked through, you can, you can make bread from that. I don't know what is that. We do this at home, all right? Wait, what is that to, that, that to use? Is it cassava? Yeah, so, Akira, we can see you, yes. Uh, I like what you're doing, keep up the good work, Terry Man said. Yeah, thank you very much. Terry Man, where are you see, uh, watching us from? Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we, I, I, I think, I, um, you know, most of the times, uh, a lot of people, they, they, they wonder, where do I get this kind of um, motivation? Or where do I get these ideas, you know, like the machines that I make and all those things. But a lot of people don't, don't believe that everything that I'm doing, I'm learning it from online. Yeah, so what I do, I go on YouTube and I search and I watch videos and I just keep on watching the videos over and over and over and over until I get it. The, the, when I'm watching uh, something being done there, all I want to know is this person who's doing, sharing the video on YouTube, 
what does he want us to, oh, the, whatever function is doing, what does he want to achieve? And then the, the machine is making, what, it, what does it, uh, what's, what is it going to achieve, you know? And uh, for, for it to achieve the, those results, what processes is it going to go through? You know, so I, I first I have to understand those things. So even if I'm just watching a video, it's very easy for me to, to, to be able to take that concept and be able to uh, make my own version of the machine. So yeah, I, I think it's a gift that many people don't have. I wish I had gone to university because then uh, maybe I would have even been doing biggest things. Maybe I would have already manufactured a tractor. <laughs> yeah. Right, so yes, that's what we should be doing here in Africa. We, the, we, you see, the thing is, because there's not many, we haven't yet started doing, um, being, uh, doing manufacturing from a, a serious level. It's opportunities for a startup, you know? Somebody talked about funding. Funding is going to come when you start. So if you start, and you show the people that you can be able to do this thing and it can happen, funding will come. But for you to just come with a concept on paper, go to somebody and say, hey, I want you to fund me, I've got this idea. Nobody is going to, do, to be willing to fund you. So yeah, just start. Uh, Ted, the benefit of re-engineering is good for customer in Africa. We can buy this machine cheaper. Yes, that's true. Like now, the, the, solar, the solar thrusher that I'm going to make is going to be less cheaper comparing with the ones that are coming from China. So our farmers are going to benefit, you know. And another thing also, what, 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 what is going to be beneficial for them, whenever there is any problems with a machine, I am always going to be there because I always give guarantees, a guarantee for my products. So I'll always, they will cut and bring it here and I can service it. Sometimes I can even service free of charge. So yeah, that's the advantage, the, the benefit. And another thing is because it's being made locally, it's, 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 gonna, it's going to be very easy for our farmers to access because sometimes these machines can be very scarce, difficult to find. Yeah, so that's the that's advantage of reverse engineering. Um, and uh, I, I think I would want many people to follow. I know there's a lot of people who are doing reverse engineering. There are people who are making uh, farming machines here in Malawi, in Tanzania, in Zambia. But we need to be more and more of these people because the more we are, the more affordable the machines are going to be and the more solutions we're going to bring to the challenges that we're facing in our continent. Yeah. Grace and peace, my brother. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, that's a reg Regmon music, Regmon music. Yeah, you are always, most of the time, coming to watch me on, on live. I've seen this, your name before. Uh, please uh, tell us where you're watching me from. I would like to know which country, what time is it there? Yeah, so, yeah, so this, this in front of me is a tractor. Uh, let, me, let me show you this tractor so that you can see it. Yeah, so I want to show you the tractor. Is you see that's this is a tractor. Yeah, so I bought I bought it from scrap. I, I bought it from the scrap and uh, it's not a working tractor, but but I would like to just um, one day try to to fix it so that it works again. But before I fix it, I will be taking it apart and look at the parts and see if those parts I can be able to, you know, uh, reverse engineer myself and then make one for, uh, for myself. Yeah, I know they, they make them very complicated. It's got a few gears here. So, um, but I still have to understand what these gears mean. Maybe I'm not going to use all the gears. I'm going to just use, uh, mainly for me, all I want is uh, the reverse forward and the neutral gear is very important for me. And the, when it comes to the holes at the bottom, the plow and the tiller, we can also even make ourselves. So yeah, uh, it shouldn't be rocket science. I have seen people have made the simple ones, simple versions ones. So I, I should be able to make one. 
Yeah, so reverse engineering. <laughs> All right, if, if there's anybody who has done any reverse engineering, please share with us so that we can hear. Uh, if you just came, don't forget to like. We need to get more likes so that we can have a lot of uh, people that have been, um, the algorithm is going to share to other people so that we can have a lot of people joining us. Yeah, so if you, if you have any ideas uh, when it comes to re uh, reverse engineering, please share. Um, we would like to hear. I just want to fly drones. Hey, hey, hello. How are you? Ah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think uh, also uh, I, in Malawi, there's, a, there's a, a club for drones. So the young people are building their own drones here. It's like, almost like a school where they're teaching people, young people, how to work with internet of things. So they are actually building some drones somewhere. They, are, they, they have even given them an airfield where they're doing, practicing their skills there. Yeah. Awesome, 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 yes. Uh, shared it to my Facebook page. Wow, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. You know, if, if you guys can be able to share this uh, live to your Facebook page, to your WhatsApp groups, it will be very nice. So that uh, a lot of young people, they need to be able to hear this. We need to push a lot of African people to start thinking now outside the box you know like we need to 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 challenge ourselves and say okay if it can be done in china we can do it here in africa so we are also human beings we we can actually do anything that anybody else can do yeah so this is a, our chance to be able to motivate one another uh regno music says hey bro good to see you just want to fly. Oh, yeah. Do, do good to see just want to fly drones. Yeah, I've watched his, some of these videos. I know a very beautiful scenery with the drones there. Yeah, I'm also trying to see if I can get a drone because then, then I can be able to show you more pictures. I want to show you um, a drone um, video of this place, but I must try to see if I can get the guy who did the drone uh, footage for me because I've got solar panels on the other house now so that you can see how it is there with those solar panels. And also when we put these panels that we are going to put here, it would be great uh, if the drone can come and then the people can see. Um, knowledge is power. This is a great topic. Wish you the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to fly drones. Uh, Regno Music. Hey, bro. Good to see you as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's very nice now. We are building a family. We're building a community here. We are building a community. And uh, I wish many young Africans also they join us on a topic like this, because I think that this type of topics are very important. Uh, we need to be able to inspire the young people uh, that it can be done. You know, if, if a 50-year-old person like me who never went to university is going to build a tractor, how about a young, fresh, um, African who just finished university, graduated, what more could they do? You see what I mean? And, uh, they mustn't always think about uh, uh, looking for a job. We must always thinking of saying, okay, we got challenges. What role can I play with the skills that I have? You know, the education that I have, what roles can I play uh, to solve these problems? Yeah, I always say, um, Forever blessed say, hi, 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 I'm late. No, you're not that much late because, uh, yeah, we, you are almost an hour late, yeah. Almost an hour late <laughs> because we, we started almost at half past eight. It's almost one hour now. Uh, yes, the children are the future, you know. Um, th there's been a couple of times that um, I've been invited to universities to go and talk to the students there. And I've always told them because most of the... Uh, when, when I've made my uh, presentation, the questions they were always asking me is, Ted, how about funding? Because the, the main problem, the main, main challenge that uh, young people or entrepreneurs face is, is, is a funding. And uh, I'm, I always tell them that the, the challenge is not, is not the funding. The challenge is to start. Many people can't start. Many people don't know how to start. That's the challenge, it's not the funding. Because I gave an example to say, okay, 
you can be um, a graduate. You just graduated from university and you, you know, you don't have a job, but at least maybe you do get peace work and you get a little bit of money here and there. You can think of, say, okay, how can I, what if I can design um, a push tractor, for instance? Then you come up with your designs and then you go to the scrapyard to look for the parts for your tractor, you know? So you just buy this, the parts you put aside, you buy the other part you put aside until you have enough to build your tractor. And then after building your tractor, then you go on to a field to do a demonstration. You take a video, a camera, somebody do a video, you do a demonstration with your push tractor. Then you come to on Facebook and share it on so many business groups and you say, here, I've just um, manufactured this tractor. It can do this and this and this, and you talk all about all the features. I'm telling you, at the end of the day, you'll be surprised how many people are going to come to your inbox, how many people are going to phone you that they need that tractor. And now you tell them that it's, I'm just a startup. The tractor that you made, the first person that, that pays you, that's got to come with the money, you sell it to them. The others, you tell them, if you, if you can trust me, you can just give me a deposit and then they give you maybe half, 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 deposit, half down deposit. And then you go to the scrapyard, you buy more materials, make another tractor. After you've sold a couple of tractors, then you can start going into the hardware to buy new sheets, you know, steel and other stuff. And then you will find that when your business is, uh, then make sure that when you're doing this, you open, you have opened a business account, you have opened, you have re registered your business, and then uh, you're saving your money. When you're making your sales, you must be saving your money in the bank. So then the funding that you've been looking for is not going to be a problem because if you go to a bank, and you sell your idea, you show them the history of how you've made you, you started and actually how much money you have been making and how much orders that you have, then they can give you a loan. So people, they, they, they somehow, most of the young people, they think that uh, getting funding is when you have a business plan and you've got your ideas and you go to a bank and the bank is gonna give you some money. They will never give you money. It's a big risk. They will never take a risk on somebody who wants to experiment, you know. But if you are somebody who is already doing something, you know, you're struggling, you baby steps, but the opportunity is there. You can sell the opportunity to the funders or even to ask somebody to invest. People will invest in a business. Like in my business, it's easier for somebody to invest because I've got a track record. I can show them how many machines I've made so far in last year, previous year. How many were well, the stuff that I've built in, uh, you know, the stuff that I've bought. They, I can show them my account. They will see the history of uh, the money going in, coming out. It's much easier for somebody to give me a, uh, to, 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 to invest in my business. So, yeah, if you're, you, you, if you're a student, you're just starting, just start. That's the only secret. But many people don't know how to do it. Yeah, so that's why I'm always coming um on on youtube and i've done it a lot on facebook just to inspire the young people yeah you need to prove your concept show investors there is a market and you can save that market funding is for growing not starting yes but many 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 of the young people they're thinking that uh you you go to university you graduate you come home you draw a business plan and then you go looking for funding at the bank and they'll give you. It will never happen. It's very difficult. Unless you have been sponsored by maybe an NGO, you know, there's those kind of funding, uh, funding from NGOs. Maybe that can happen. But to go to a bank or get investors, they want to invest in something that is already on the ground. So you better start thinking, how do, how do I start? If you can just learn how to start, you know, how to get the courage. And, and starting doesn't require some rocket sciences. Starting doesn't require qualification. Starting requires courage. Starting requires taking risks, you see. But if you can't take a risk, if you're not courageous enough, if you can't take failure, you will never be able to start. Because some of the people are failing to start because they are afraid of, of failing. 
I am not afraid of failing. I have never made a soya shell, but I'm here busy buying these things from Scrappy, spending money buying the things because I, I, I believe I would be able to do it. If I fail, I fail. I will even come online and say, you know, I wanted to make the soya, soya uh, shredder, but uh, I have failed. So you, you shouldn't be afraid of failing. Yeah, so uh, I just want to fly drones. I see a lot of crowdfunding going on. That's a route as well. Yes, like uh, somebody, somebody suggested that um, I must do the crowdfunding or the go go fund me about you know starting a tourism business in Malawi. You know, like we acquire land at the lake and then build round houses there. We can acquire um, land, build round houses there, and then also get ourselves a van, and then start selling a package to our federal diasporans who are in America. In, the UK, you know, um, Jamaica. So whenever they want to come to Africa for a visit, they can just uh, buy the package, they fly from there, we collect them at the airport, and then we just draw up an itinerary. So we take them to the lake, we've got accommodation already, they can stay there, and then we show them Malawi. We take them also in villages and places where they can explore to see if they want to start a business, what type of business they can start. Yeah, but so I, I was telling this person who was suggesting this, I said, but I don't really understand how the GoFundMe uh, works. And then she, he or she said, no, Ted, you can always bring it up on your live session because there are some people they might have the ideas on of how that works. Yeah, it would be a great idea. Let's say, for example, you have land at the lake, you have some land at Rikoma, and, you know, build some chalets there. So when our visitors come, they can just go and find accommodation. Yeah, so I'm just getting a, a lot of notifications here. I just want to try to, what's your cash up number? Mm, cash up number. <laughs> I haven't done anything. I don't even understand what cash up is because I'm just hearing a lot cash up and all those kind of things. I, I mustn't lie to you. I have never explored that. So I don't have that. I don't even know if uh, as a Malawian, I will be allowed to have a cash up. I think cash up is an, a, a form of receiving money or something like that or doing money transactions. So I don't know being a Malawian, if I can have access to that, uh, there's a possibility of having access to that because I see there's a lot of these transactions that you can do that we are not allowed to do. Like even in Google Ads in Malawi, you can't do it. I think those who are doing it in Malawi, they're doing it you know, through maybe an um, external source. Uh, do, you have, do I have PayPal? Okay, with PayPal, I want to do it um, I think in this week or next week, by the end of next week, I should have a PayPal account. I think it's also possible, yeah? I will go to my bank and then find out how it's done. Because, but I've heard that in Malawi, as we can even have a PayPal account. So, yeah, by the end of next week, I'm going to be able to have a PayPal account. Uh, Regno Music says, yes, it's so people can send you money. Yes, yeah, that's true. So I'm going to really find out the paper. But Cash App, I think Cash App, I heard about it once and I tried to open an account. It refused. It said, I'm living in a country where Cash App is not available. Something like that. Um, I just want to fry drones. Oh, keep us posted. Yes, I will too. Um, one of these live sessions, I'm going to explain. I, when, when I have that uh, paper account, I'm going to share... Um, so that people can get the uh, ability to be able to send money if they want. At the moment, if somebody wants to send money, it's just uh, MoneyGram, uh, Western Union. I've had one of one of the subscribers, she sent me some money through MoneyGram. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So that's it. So today we were talking about reverse engineering. I, I am a master of reverse engineering. <laughs> yeah, I've made a vibrating table before. I've made a plate compactor. I've made uh, this machine, uh, the, the cement block machine. Um, I'm even making the pavers machine. 
I've, I've, I've made so many things. I've made briquette machines. People have asked me, Ted, can you make a uh, briquette machine for us? And I've made briquette machines. I've made, uh, I've made uh, uh, pumps before. Um, some people have bought a pump from me before. Yeah, and I was even about to make treadle pumps, but I feel like a treadle pumps is something that is so, you know, like if people get tired using it, I must think of another easier way of, um, of uh, people can pump water. Yeah, so I've made a windmill pump. So yeah, I'm a master of uh, reverse engineering. All right, please don't forget to like um, so that we get this uh, live recommended to other people. And also if it's your first time to join uh, or to watch us on this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I see some people they subscribing and they're not getting hitting the notification bell and then they don't get notified whenever I am live or whenever I'm sharing some videos. I don't know if uh, any of you have watched the video I was driving around Blanta, I mean, around the long way. Tell me what you think about it. Uh, my camera is a bit jumpy when I'm doing it. I'm trying to figure out how to uh, stabilize it, but uh, it gets a little bit jumpy. I did another, and that video has uh, got uh, two parts because uh, when I was editing it, the computer couldn't allow me to put the whole video together so i had to split it into two parts and then today i was also doing another one in this area because some people have asked me they want to see the roadworks that are happening in my area so i did one but then and then the the memory was too full but i had done about 20 minutes so yeah and then i will get a chance to continue and the other part yeah so if you like if you like the videos that i'm doing Drive, when I'm driving to town, please uh, let me know, leave a comment, and also suggest how you'd like me to do the video. But uh, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm not speaking, saying anything, I just drive. Just let you uh, see the roads that I use when I'm driving. Yeah, reverse engineering. Um, yeah, we would like to hear more about you, on your side, what, what uh, what ideas do you think you should be focusing on in Africa when it comes to reverse engineering? Is it only the agriculture sector? What about the health sector? What about the transport sector? Because like um, I'm also busy doing a pickup. It's only that I don't get much time to do it. But uh, yeah, the pickup is also to like to help people in the villages whenever they are harvesting their uh, crops. So there's most of the times the people are using ox cut. So I would like to do work on that one uh, so that the people can uh, be able to harvest using this utility vehicle. So yeah, we have transport industry where we can do reverse engineering. We have, um, we have construction industry. I see in India, they use a lot of um, reverse engineering ideas when it comes to construction. You know, like when they're building multi-story houses, they make these machines that would take mortar to take it up. We don't have those things here in the, in Africa. People have to use plants and then they push a wheelbarrow going up the multi-story building with a wheelbarrow with concrete. Can you imagine? This is very difficult. So we need to start thinking outside the box and coming up with these solutions. All right. Yeah, so yeah, I think maybe I will have to be going. It's almost an hour. Uh, if there is any questions you'd like to ask me, if there is anything that you would like to add on, please um, don't hesitate. Uh, I'm here. I'm here to answer questions. I'm here to, to listen to your ideas, your suggestions. Thank you for the conversation, really opening other possibilities and ideas. Yes, I'll keep on doing this. And even when I'm doing my reverse engineering, when I'm doing the solar, sh um, the solar shaler, I'm gonna share the videos so that people can see uh, that it can be done. So other people can also do it. Uh, Reguno Music said, good to see you again, catch you later. Yes, thank you very much. So if you're it's your first time to watch me, please don't forget to subscribe. I'm begging you, subscribe. 
and also uh, hit the notification bell so that you can be notified every time I post a video or when I'm coming live. And uh, uh, leave, don't forget to leave a comment even after the live is over. Please continue leaving a comment. And please share your suggestions of what kind of topics do you want to be to be sharing. And for those in South Africa, I am going to do a live and we're going to talk about the opportunities that side. And also those in Malawi, I'm going to do a live one day and we're going to talk about the opportunities that are here in Malawi. So thank you very much for your time, for coming to watch me. And uh, I'll see you again on Saturday night. So Saturday night, I'm going to have another live session. I won't be doing live sessions on, on Friday because uh, those in the UK, I understand some of them are traveling. They're working during the week and they're traveling back home on a Friday. So I'll do it on Saturdays. Yeah, so thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it.